Hey fellas, been plugging away at the B25 and we are close to paint. In fact, I think the next episode will be on uh, painting the exterior. But this one is a little bit long and I apologize. I try to keep them, my videos in the 15 to 20 minute range if, all, if at all possible. But this one I kind of go through two different parts. Uh, the first part is showing you how I fill gaps. And the second part is how I paint the propellers. Propellers, propellers. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, uh, let's take a look. All right, guys, I've got everything together on this. Pretty much all the big parts that have been glued. And this is something I've been wanting to kind of do for a little bit and uh, show you how I fill in little gaps like this along. Uh, and it's, it's not something that I'd want to fill in with something that I would have to sand just because I am going to ruin so much detail along the edges and to be honest with you it's gonna look worse than if you probably just would have left the gap gap there to begin with and it's gonna take a lot more work so what I like to use is testers putty now a lot of people don't like this stuff and I understand why but uh, it does have its uses and I'll show you how I use this here in a sec and I really like this now, I used to use for, for uh, issues like this is this plastic putty, but I find that this really shrinks a lot, and uh, it's just not quite as good, in my opinion, as this stuff. And what I like about this is that it's uh, alcohol, or IPA, isopropyl alcohol, will uh, we'll rub this, or clean this off, just like water does with the perfect plastic or the um, Vallejo plastic putty. And I found that this stuff doesn't shrink. And if it does, it shrinks very little. So what I do is I go along and I squirt some along the seam that I wanna fill in. And then I've got a little uh, cuticle stick and you can get at Walmart. And I just kinda squish it in there. And I'm not real concerned about it getting on other parts just yet. What I'm, my main concern is getting it down in that crack. And then I can come along and kind of carve off the excess. Now this does dry pretty quickly. And uh, once it starts hardening, so you've only got a, really a few minutes to work with this before it starts, starts hardening. And it's just kind of difficult to work with. So I've got that crack filled. Now I'll come along, I'll do the same thing on this side. Now this is about the only time I use this. I don't use it on like corners or any place I need to sand. In my opinion, this stuff does not sand very well. This is about the only use I, I have for this stuff, but it is valuable. And some of this is like really wet. And I'm just squishing it in there. Trying to get as, a much, as much of it down in the crack as possible. To fill that crack. Okay, now I'm not going to play with it anymore because it's starting to dry. And what will happen is I'll just pull some of it out of the crack. So I really want it to, to get it in wet and leave it in the crack until it dries. Um, then what I'll do, and uh, I'll come back and show you how easy it is. I just, I've got some isopropyl alcohol. I'll put it on a rag or a Q-tip and then I'll come and wipe it off. And this is one, this is, I did this a few days ago. These are the nacelles, or the engine cowling. And I just uh, filled in some, some of these cracks just to clean it up a little bit. Uh, I know it's not perfect, but it was a lot better. I think it looks a lot better when you fill these in. And it's still a little more shallow, so you can see the panel line. You're not totally obliterating the panel line. You're just filling in those deep cracks and crevices. And that's kind of what it looks like. And that's just basically doing the same thing 
and then wiping off the excess with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so I will let that dry. I've got some other things to do, so I'll probably come back in a couple hours once it's fully dry and um, wipe it all off and show you how easy it is. Okay, it's uh, had plenty of time to dry. It's been a couple hours. I went out and helped my dad with a mower and did some yard work for my mother-in-law because I'm such a good son-in-law. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and you can use lacquer thinner, but lacquer thinner will end up melting the plastic if you're not really careful. So what I found works best is 91% isopropyl alcohol. <clears throat> so I've got some in my little squirter and I'm just going to put some on a paper towel and I'm going to just go along and moisten it. You can see it doesn't come right off. You're going to have to rub a little bit and soak it just a little bit. And I try not to push too hard on the lines because I don't want to pull very much out, if any at all. I'm just going to come along here. And you can do this with a Q-tip as well. And just kind of, once the alcohol soaks through, it does loosen it up. And I'm just going to rub it off. And you can even come in with a, a toothpick and kind of scrape away some of the big chunks that you've got on the surrounding plastic. And it's kind of softened up with the, the isopropyl alcohol. So I can just come in and scrape off some of that in here in the corner where I don't really want it. And then just come back and wipe it off. Now I'm gonna grab a Q-tip. And sometimes I've had to do this, go over it a couple times if I, if I didn't get it down in the crack well enough. Now this isn't something you'd wanna do to take care of seam lines per se, but it is good for filling gaps where they're already going to be a, uh, like a panel line. So when I take care of my seam lines, I use CA glue and metallic pigment pigment but for filling gaps like this you, know, you can kind of see right in here where it doesn't look like it's it's uh, filled in but what that is I believe is where the glue and the plastic have joined up so there is actually no gap there it just kind of looks like it but I'll be able to tell for sure once I get primer on it now this isn't obviously a good technique to use once you get paint or primer on it because when you rub it off with alcohol obviously you're going to rub the paint off so this is like a this is something that i do before i put any paint or primer on and it fills these gaps quite nicely and i don't lose any detail surrounding the area that i filled And you can do this when it's wet, but I find it just works a little bit better when it's completely dry. So you, it's not like something you have to worry about. Oh, it's going to get too dry and it's going to be hard to come off. You can see here, I've only worked on it for maybe a, a couple minutes and I've already got this part cleaned up. Okay. That's filled in that little gap quite nicely. And once I get primer over it, you won't even be, be able to tell there was a gap there. So that's how that works. Alrighty, now I've got everything pretty much buttoned down and ready to go. I've cleaned up all my seams along the top and the bottom, and I think I've got those pretty good. And I was really careful right along here where it meets up with the glass 
and right along here where it's going to meet up with the canopy glass to uh, make sure I didn't sand those down too much so that they would be level and I kept checking let me grab the canopy and my carefulness really paid off because it's going to fit nice and flush pretty much everywhere. I don't think I'm going to have to do any filling or anything around the glass. And as you can see, when I glued it, this end was a little bit shorter than this side. So I did use my my uh, little CA and metallic pigment to just raise that area up a little bit. So I really didn't take much off this side, if any at all. And I just kind of added here and smoothed it all out. Same thing right here, and I've got it where it fits really good. I did uh, fill a few seams, or this gap right along here. Rather than try to sand it down, there might be like a little bitty, just a hair of a fraction of a super centimeter right here. But I think it's going to be fine. I just kind of filled in just a few little gaps with the testers putty and I got the glass cut out and got a I took I had a, a piece of uh, glass from a b17 HK models b17 I had in my spares box and it had the same curvature as this does so I just cut out a little section of it and it's got the little rivet lines and everything in there the rivets and kind of the the frame already in in this side so I just cut that a little piece out and glued it in and you're not going to see where the glue because I used extra thin I wanted a really strong bond so it didn't push in when I was trying to mask it and fall into the inside of the plane but uh, that worked out pretty well used my Dremel tool to cut out the basic shape of the window and then took a file and cleaned it out so I think that's gonna look really good for the open window and uh, I did uh, get a couple scratches on the canopy while I was doing that on the windshield and I ended up sanding and repolishing it and uh, I think it looks pretty good. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to blow out all the dust from sanding and everything and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and re-rivet some lost rivet lines along the top and the bottom where I had sanded and then uh, once that's done, <laughs> once I blow out all the dust, I'm going to glue the, the top turret mechanism in place, then glue the top turret glass down, make sure I get that all straight. And, uh, and then I will mask all the windows, except for these, because we're painting them, yay. And this is glued on with, I put a little more epoxy on the inside, just so it would have a little more grab up here on top. And then I just set it in place, let that dry, and then I used Tamiya Extra Thin. To give a nice strong bond around the whole thing and it's pretty solid so after that I should be able to mask all the windows put them in and get ready for paint so see you in a bit all right what I want to show you now is my simple method for painting propellers now what I've done is I put a gloss base coat and I use mr. hobby GX2 for that and it really doesn't matter. I guess you could have used a I could have used a flat because the plastic is kind of it's not like a real smooth plastic, so I'm not going to get a really good sheen anyway. But I wanted to have a, a somewhat glossy of a surface because I am going to do some chipping with this technique. Then what I took is the AK Extreme Metal Aluminum and put a couple layers of aluminum on that. So I got a nice nice aluminum base coat to start with to do my chipping. Now I'm going to take my Infini cutting mat and I've cut out little sections and what I'm going to use these for is to try to keep the yellow tips even all the way around. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to do the best I can to align these and just put it right at the end. I think that's going to be good. And I'm going to go around and do this on all of the ends of the propellers, blades. 
And then I'll just take this, line it up. here on this side and I'm just gonna try to match it up as best as possible and then I kind of fold it over so I don't have I don't have any bleed through and I'm just gonna do this all the way around I can probably cut this off a little bit and reuse this piece Okay, now those tips are all masked off and I'm gonna spray these yellow, peel up my tape, cover up the yellow with uh, masking tape, and then spray my NATO black. Now I will cover this up as well because I wanna keep this a little bit shinier and then I'll come back and I can, I'll show you how that I, I, I handle this area right down here. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna mask up the other one spray the yellow then spray the black and uh come back to start the chipping all right well i think i'm going to try something just a little bit different so now i sprayed the propellers with this nato black xf69 one of my favorite colors and i think what i'm going to try to do if i can find the picture again i sound like a a dork today don't I all right well anyway uh, there's there was a picture in this book that I found right here where you can see it's kind of blotchy and I think I'm gonna try to recreate that a little bit with some sponge sponge work so I've got the pipette in which I had my NATO black. Put a little bit of that in there. Now let's put a little bit of <coughs> XF or X20A thinner. Thin that out a little bit. And let's throw a little bit of buff XF57. It's a uh, magic. It's a magic color as far as I'm concerned. Lighten that up a little bit. I really want to thin this out. just did that. I'm oh, so dumb. Anyway, all right, so let's, oh, my dog's going crazy. Probably need a little bit more. So I'm really going to thin this out. I don't know how this is going to work out. It may suck, but uh, oh well. We can always re repaint over it. spots All right. I think this might work out pretty good actually so I'm just gonna back on their sticks all right so I'm just taking this and I think this is going to provide that just kind of a like a weathered look to it like I said this buff is a magic color it really does wonders I 
I think this is going to be cool, fellas. Set that aside, and we'll do the next one. I've got this really thin so this is almost just gonna yeah I really like the way that looks that's cool I just found something different found something new is going to be cool alrighty so what I will do next is now we're gonna do some chipping and to do that and set this stuff aside I'm gonna take my Q-tips and some Vallejo airbrush thinner. Now this will actually <coughs> thin to Mia paints, but it's not going to be as harsh as the X20. So then what I'll do is right along the top, I'm just going to take this and just run this along the top. And it's going to rub off some of that paint. And actually, let me take off so I can get the yellow as well. Basically, I'm just soaking my little cotton swab here and just kind of rubbing off the top of this. Make sure I'm getting the right side. And I could probably use a brush as well. And I think that's what I may do. Let's get a little bit bigger brush. Kind of let this moisten it up and loosen up that paint just here at the top and come along with a toothpick and just kind of run it along and just make some some scratches some chips kind of chip away that paint Come back with my brush.
All right, this is gonna give a cool look. Make sure I get the top and the back. all about experimenting. And I'm going to try to try to keep it random, but I do want to focus my chipping on just the top and the worn area along where it it meets the uh, the way it turns. All right, I think that's going to look pretty good. All right, I am done with the propellers and the engines. So let's take a look at these. I, I really do like how that, um, that buff and NATO black sponge, that real thin sponge layer that I put on, it's kind of subtle, but uh, I really like how it turned out. It gives it just a little... A little uh, I don't know, it just gives a little something extra that I haven't been putting on my props. I think that looks really cool. But um, got it all flat coated. What I did is to take care of this portion right here, I just masked off the blades at the where it meets the, the spinner and uh, sprayed this area with some dark aluminum. So, and then I Put a clear coat on it, did a little bit of an oil wash just to kind of dirty it up, and then uh, put a flat coat, and then ended up hand brushing some future on the, the tip just to give that a little bit different of a sheen. I really like how it turned out. I've also got the engines done, and uh, I really like how those turned out. Now, I didn't really mess with painting the back. I did paint it silver, but uh, you're not going to see it. And... This is all of the engine that you're going to see. So you're not going to see that much. And then when you put the propeller blades on, you know, you just kind of get a, an effect of what's in there. And it uh, it's really cool. I mean, I spent about a day <laughs> making these darn, darn engines. And uh, there are a lot of parts to them. All these little wires are all separate. So it was kind of a pain in the butt. And I didn't put any of the stuff in in the back because you're not going to see it anyway. Having built this, I know it's uh, not something you're going to see, so it's kind of a waste of time. So these are all good to go, and I am ready to put the windows in and start painting. Here are the bomb racks that I've got. I got those finished up the other day. Did a lot of weathering on these just to grime them up and crunch them up, and the magnets work perfectly. They fit in there, you can pull them out, and I don't have to worry about breaking them off while I'm painting. So, all right, I will uh, get on with putting the window glass in, and I will see you guys on the next video.